It started like a normal day for a cabinet minister, a public event to highlight government's use of artificial intelligence. An era where government operations and the delivery of better government services is done through and with artificial intelligence technologies. But what the crowd didn't know and what Phil Pot didn't tell them was that it would be her last event as a cabinet minister. Phil Pot's resignation letter makes it clear that she is quitting over the SNC-Lavalin controversy. Sadly, I have lost confidence in how the government has dealt with this matter and in how it has responded to the issues raised. There can be a cost to acting on one's principles, but there is a bigger cost to abandoning them. Before her resignation went public, Phil Pot was asked about Jody Wilson-Raybould and pushed away all questions. So I'm here today to celebrate AI Day and I'm not going to be taking questions on those issues. Thanks. Phil Pot and Wilson Raybould are close friends and political allies. Phil Pot tweeted her support when Wilson Raybould quit cabinet. Wilson Raybould returned the favor when news of Phil Pot's departure broke. Jane Phil Pot's resignation from cabinet clearly demonstrates a government in total chaos, led by a disgraced prime minister, consumed with scandal and focused only on his political survival. Survival is an unsettled question, but function is undeniably hurt. Phil Pot was seen as one of Trudeau's most capable and trusted ministers, praised at the cabinet table for her judgment and effectiveness in health and indigenous services before moving to Treasury Board. Once again, it left the Prime Minister to respond to a surprise resignation from a high profile minister. I know Ms. Philpott has felt this way for some time, and while I am disappointed, I understand her decision to step down, and I want to thank her for her service. I want to thank her. His statement was interrupted by protesters, one of many disruptions at this rally about climate change. It's break week for Parliament, but no breaks for the Prime Minister. I'm listening carefully to the various voices, testimonies, and opinions. There are more questions still to answer and more to be said in the coming days and weeks. A lot more to come in the coming days. Uh, David Trudeau left a lot unsaid there tonight about starting with the future of Jody Wilson-Raybould. Yeah, that's right. He did not address whether Jody Wilson-Raybould is going to be able to stay in caucus, a decision made far more complicated by Jane Philpott's resignation earlier today. What a senior government official tells me is that there's no urgency on that decision because Parliament is on break. It's not due back until the uh, 18th of March when parliamentarians return for the budget. And because of that, there is no caucus meeting to worry about. So the timeline is when everyone is back together and when caucus is going to meet. So the week of the 18th, look for that as a timeline, at least for now, Rosie, and when they have to make that decision. Okay, so this was an unexpected big day today, but Wednesday also expected to be a big day. Yeah, another big chapter in this story. We're going to hear from the Prime Minister's former top advisor, Jerry Butts. He's going to testify at the Justice Committee, and the clerk of the Privy Council, Michael Wernick, is going to reappear at the Justice Committee. And what another source tells us is that both men have copies of their communications with Jody Wilson-Raybould throughout the period in question in this controversy, and they believe that it will cast her version of events in a very different light. So stay tuned. This is not even close to being over. Okay. David Cochran on this story again tonight in Ottawa. Thank you. You're welcome.